Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another film skirt tutorial. Today we're going to be creating the human torch effect and it is going to look a little something like this. Flame on I actually thought of the idea for this effect, the baseline of this effect kind of randomly. It's just something I was dreaming about After Effects like I always do, and it kind of popped into my head and I was like, oh, I wonder if, if I do this, this, and this, could I get something that kind of looks like this? And so I fiddled around with After Effects in particular, and blammo, look what we got. And so this does include a paid plugin, guys. This is with Trap Code Particular from Red Giant. I have a link in the description for where you can check Check it out on their website and I believe there's also an option for a free trial if you just want to get it for this effect. Maybe you want to buy it. This is not sponsored by Red Giant but it's a great asset and a great tool so I would recommend checking it out. But with all that being said, let's get into the tutorial. What you're going to want to do, film something similar that I did is just me standing there saying flame on. You don't have to do the flame on transition if you just want to be already on the effect, like already have your flame on, that's completely up to you. It might actually be easier, a little bit less work if it's just a full clip of the Human Torch power already ignited. I film myself in front of this wall once with my shirt on and then the second with my shirt off doing the same motion. Uh, that was just assuming that once I activate the flame on powers, my shirt would burn off. So if you wanted to, just make it all happen in the same clip, that would make your life a lot easier. If you wanna take the extra step like I did, essentially just line up your two clips, cut them together, and then regardless of that, once you have your clips all aligned, whether it's one clip or two, you're gonna to need to roto your body out. And so rotoscoping means to cut it out either using masks or the roto brush. I use the roto brush. Also another way you can do this is shooting on a green screen. That's gonna save you a lot of time, but I like to make things hard for myself. So I went the extra mile, did some roto brushing, which wasn't really bad. It's only like a three second clip really. And then from there, I, since I used the roto brush, I rendered out the roto of my body just so it would be a full clip that I could use. So once you have that roto scoped, I pre-comped the roto scoped body. Then I duplicated the comp twice in the project and renamed each of them. One of them is body input, one is animation, and the other is roto body comp. So with the roto body comp, double click into that. I duplicated the roto body layer and turned off the bottom one just to have untouched layer. On the roto body layer, I put on these effects. Invert, making things look nice and negative. Put on a levels effect to crush the blacks a little bit. Just drag that front and middle slider. Then after that, hue saturation. And I flipped the master hue to positive 180 just to get it back to a warm tone. Then after that, went to color correction and tint. And I mapped the black to a bright red, then mapped the white to a bright yellow. I turned it down to 44% on the amount to tint, went over to color correction and added a tritone, changed that middle color up to a bright orange, changed the blend with original amount to 75%, then went to color correction and curves, kind of tweak the colors that I got there. You're gonna get a lot of different results that all look good. It's just a preference thing beyond there. After that, I went to the roto body layer that I previously turned off on the bottom and then duplicated it and renamed it Light Wrap Luma. Then I duplicated the Light Wrap Luma and just named that one Light Wrap. On the Light Wrap layer, we're going to put on a tint effect to make sure it's matte black to white and white to white. So it's completely filling it as white. Then from there, go to Blur and Sharpen and a Gaussian Blur of about 50. Then after that, I'm gonna go to color correction and put a curves on there and I'm gonna switch the channel to alpha. And from there, we're gonna make an upside down U. After that, I went to distort and added a turbulent displace where I turned the amount to 30 and the size to nine. Just a little bit of complexity. I changed it to twist smoother, just to kind of give it a little bit of life. Then from there, went to the light wrap luma layer and added a tint effect to make it all white as well. 
and then set the light wrap layer to a luma mat so that way it's uh, glowing on the inside of the mat of my body now there's an inner glow like there's light all around my skin and then i changed the blend mode to add and then added a tritone and give it kind of a yellowy orange color all right now let's go back into our project and open the body input comp that's one of the duplicates of the roto body and we duplicate the roto body layer I rename that noise luma give it a tint of white white and then make a solid add fractal noise adjust the settings in there change the sub rotation to plus 216 on the fractal type dynamic progressive then i raise the contrast and lower the brightness to get it nice and crispy and flame looking then put the fractal solid as a luma mat to the noise luma layer change the fractal layer to overlay and as you can see now my body's looking nice and flamey then throw an adjust adjustment layer on top with a tint effect to make everything black and white. All right, now that we got that done, let's drag the body input into the torch effect composition. Then we're going to add a new solid, label it emitter, all lowercase, just like I did here. And then we're going to go to RG trap code and add particular. Let's make sure our body input layer is a 3D object. We'll check that right here. Then we'll go into the particular layer, change the emitter type to layer, then scroll down to layer emitter and choose the body input layer. And then as you see, it creates a little layer light for you. From there, we're gonna crank up the particles a lot. Right here, I did 7,000 just to start with because it's a lot, but it's not too crazy yet. In reality though, you're probably gonna end up adjusting it closer to 12 to 1500. I just did 7,000 at first just to kind of keep things slow for my computer. From there, we are going to go down to the particle drop down menu here we're going to change the life to 0.5 then change the particle type to sprite and we're going to choose one of their fire loop options they got four of the fire loops i would pick either two or three those are the ones that work best for me but it really depends on what look you want to do after that we're going to go over to the size we're going to crank it all the way up to 100 then select the drop down size over life choose this preset right here from the preset drop down menu and then go to the blend mode and change it to lighten then let's drop down into the physics change the gravity to negative one drop down into the air settings wind z is going to be a positive 50 and wind y a negative 75. from there i soloed the emitter layer and then rendered it out just so my computer doesn't have to be running particular so much and also because we're going to be making multiple layers with this emitter so once it renders out We'll hop back into the emitter settings without unsoloing it. Then we're gonna change the settings a little bit. We're gonna raise the size and the particles per second. Render both those out and then drop them both back into the comp. From there, I want you to unlock the layer emitter light and then select the emitter solid and the light and then pre-compose them just so we have them. I labeled it emitter one and then you're deleting it from the comp. So now with both of your flame particles that are rendered out, uh, I renamed mine flame particles front and back. Then you can drop them on top and behind them with both of them on add blend mode we got a pretty crazy fire effect not the most realistic here but if we turn off the top layer and look at the one in the back things are looking pretty good all right now on both flame particle layers we're gonna drop a turbulent displace where we change the amount to 40 size to 20 and we're not going to adjust the evolution but we're going to Click the stopwatch on offset turbulence and drag it up vertically over the layer. All right, now we're gonna make another luma mat for our top flame particle. So drop another roto body layer into the composition, add a all white tint, Gaussian blur of 50, curves with an alpha channel sine curve, then a fast box blur of 10, then another turbulent displace with a size at 12 and a mount at 50. Option or alt click the evolution stopwatch and add time times 600 just to get that evolution offset. And then you can set the front flame particles to a luma mat for the body luma. From there, uh, I duplicated the body luma again just to add an extra edge blend. All I did was add an orange tint on top of all the body luma effects, and things are looking pretty nice. If we look at our composition, we can see the issue we have here is suddenly my skin pops red and then the flames emit. So we need to animate that flame on. Remember, we made another duplicate layer of the body roto and labeled it animation. So we're gonna drop that in, scrub along the timeline where it fits our scene, then 
then double click into the animation composition. All right, so once you're inside the animation comp itself, all you're gonna have to do is just draw a squiggly line mask like I did here. And then you're going to animate that across three to five frames, uh, the quicker the better on this. Animate it from top to bottom, bottom to top, left to right. It's just going to be the way that the fire spreads across the first body creating the human torch look. I just went with the simplest route right here, just drew a little squiggly mask like this and animated the mask keyframes to go up and down. Then we hop back into the main composition, make sure that the animation lines up to the first four and five frames of the human torch body and flames, and then make another solid labeled emitter. And we're gonna follow some very similar steps to last time. So we're gonna speed round through this. Make sure your animation composition is checked as a 3D layer, then choose layer emitter, then choose the animation layer that you just dropped in. And then we're just gonna copy our same information into particular that we did the first time. We need to animate the transition. So uh, what I actually did, since we have so many things going on, so many different layers popping in at this point, is I just, I duplicated and then pre-composed my clean plate with the clip of me before the flame happens and then just dragged it over on the top of everything except for the animation layer and then just did a mask animation that followed the animation particles that I had. Then once I had that all done, I did a fast box blur on top of the animation particles and I changed the blur dimensions to vertical and the radius to five just to give it a little bit, uh, looks like it's speeding upwards. All we need is a little bit of flame on top, just some dimension and diversity on top of my actual chest and body. So what I did there is I dropped in another solid and added some fractal noise. Very similar settings to what we did for all the other fractal noise layers we've had in this composition. The fractal type, dynamic progressive. Check the invert box, put the brightness to negative 50, leave the contrast as is. And then I scaled it down a little bit to 66. Then I animated the offset turbulence to travel upwards vertically on the Y axis. Then I selected the luma mat option to make the fractal luma only exist within the body luma mat. Now, bam, there you have a really good human torch effect. Uh, and that's really the base. That's what you need to know to get started with this. Uh, one other thing that I did here, and I'll just show this really quickly, is I tracked and animated my eyes. And once I had that null from the eye track, I made two white solids and then animated those masks to stay around the outline of my eyes uh, on the roto body composition. Bunch of different tutorials on like masking out eyes and replacing with colors or making them glow. So I'm not gonna get super deep into that, but it truly for me was as simple as masking a white a solid that I tracked my eyes, then adding tint and a couple of fast box blurs to make it glow, then putting on an add blend mode. Outside of that, I also added null light factory to a solid on top for a flare during the transition just to add a little extra pop. Not 100% necessary, but I thought it looked better. So if you do have no light factory, definitely something to pop on there. And with that, guys, that is the end of this tutorial. Like I said, this is kind of the baseline of the effect to get everything set up for a perfect human torch look 100% in After Effects. Let me know in the comments what you think about this effect. Uh, let me know what effect you want next. Thanks, guys. Smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see some more cool tutorials like this.